The Social Life of Information was published in 2000. It was written by John Seeley Brown, Chief Scientist at Xerox Corporation and Director of the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, and Paul Duguid, a Research Specialist in Social and Cultural Studies in Education at the University of California at Berkeley. This book is a series of essays, conversations between these two men interested in the interweaving of technology and the human social network in everyday life. Brown and Duguid believe that technologists approach the problem of information delivery with blinders on, driving forward with a narrow tunnel design. The social periphery that demands information, the human framework of community, organization, and institution is often ignored. Technologists get caught up in the belief that faster, better, more ubiquitous information delivery is the solution to many social economic problems. They overlook the necessity of social context that will enable people to use information to address these socioeconomic needs. Tension exists between the technologist and the Luddite. Technological breakthroughs like the computer, the fax, and the internet have revolutionized how people communicate information to one another. Many people resisted these innovations, but as they have become socialized to them, they have become a part of everyday life. Even newer technologies inspire negative feelings in people, the most common being endism, the fear that the information age is going to bring an end to many aspects of information social life on which they have come to rely. Entities like libraries, the newspaper, television, and stockbrokers all appear to be at the end of their life. It is believed by many that these entities will be abandoned in favor of virtual replications of similar entities that exist online. Futurists believe that technology in this information age will break the ties that bind us. They refer to the 6D vision. The Ds refer to demassification, decentralization, denationalization, despecialization, disintermediation, and disaggregation. The main idea of the social life of information is that this 6D vision is a myth, that we do need the construct of society and community and socialization in order to understand information and in order to use information. Agents and robots were thought to be a major breakthrough in how people manage information online. There are any number of bots and search agents online, like Amazon.com or Google, ready to help us find anything we want. They even help keep track of products that we have bought online at these different sites. But the very same search agents are guided by corporations who control or buy rankings or suppress availability of products or information. New technology is often very disruptive in the workplace. Much time is spent calling the help desk or the coworker who caught on to the latest greatest device. Libraries and patrons socialize to the use of the self-checkout scanners at the grocery store, probably had little difficulty with the self-checkout stations at their local library. People need that familiarity with technology in order to make that new technology a useful part of everyday life. That familiarity at the grocery store made the transition to the self-checkout scanners at the libraries much easier. One of the ways that a business or a larger organization will try to share information across the company or the organization is through procedures. Uh, these procedures often outline the practice that they expect of their employees. This is not always the case and it's not always the most practical approach and sometimes practice actually will shape process. The authors tell how the representatives who would go out in the field every day to repair copy machines came to the realization that the procedural manual did not really address their needs, that each of these machines broke down in a very idiosyncratic way. They started keeping track of the breakdowns in the different problems that they were having with the machines. Their team leaders would bring the men together 
in the mornings before they would sit out to work and they would discuss the problems that they were having and they would share this knowledge with one another. It helped them troubleshoot difficulties that they had out in the field. The team leaders would then also compile their group's findings into a database and share them with other team leaders within that organization that enabled everyone to have access to this information by taking their own time to get together and pull the information that they had from the practice of repairing these copy machines as compared to the procedural manuals that they got from the technologists who built them uh, these service representatives were actually able to more effectively and efficiently take care of the machines they built a database that they were able to share throughout the company on how to deal with the problems and through this collaboration through this storytelling each man was able to share a piece of information about how to resolve the problem so that this collective knowledge was available to the company this information was not only available to the service representatives but oftentimes one of these service representatives would go into the call center where they would help inform the people at the call center who had the same procedural manual that did not work out in the field for the service representatives as their only means of helping people repair the copy machines themselves uh, the representative then became a resource for the call center operators and really helped keep the customers happy with their ability to fix problems or determine whether or not they needed to have a representative come out this next example of non technological uh, information conveyance comes from a report that one of the authors Paul Duguid um, made during a research trip to Portugal he was working in an archive of a 250 year old business reading correspondence from about the time of the American Revolution incoming letters were stored in wooden boxes about the size of a standard styrofoam picnic cooler each containing a fair portion of dust as old as the letters. As opening a letter triggered a brief asthmatic attack, he wore a scarf tied over his nose and mouth. Despite his attire, his nose ran, his eyes wept, and he coughed, wheezed, and snorted. He longed for a digital system that would hold the information from the letters and leave paper and dust behind. One afternoon, another historian came to work on a similar box. He read barely a word. Instead, he picked out bundles of letters and, in a move that sent my sinuses into shock, Paul says, he ran each letter beneath his nose and took a deep breath, at times almost inhaling the letter itself, but always getting a good dose of dust. Sometimes, after a particularly profound sniff, he would open the letter, glance at it briefly, make a note, and move on. Choking behind his mask, Paul asked what he was doing. He was a medical historian, a profession to avoid if you have asthma. He was documenting outbreaks of cholera. When that disease occurred in a town in the 18th century, all letters from that town were disinfected with vinegar to prevent the disease from spreading. By sniffing for faint traces of vinegar that survived 250 years and noting the date and source of the letters, he was able to chart the progress of cholera outbreaks. His research threw new light on the letters Paul was reading. Now cheery letters telling customers and creditors that all was well, business thriving, and the future rosy read a little differently if a whiff of vinegar came off the page. Then the correspondent's cheeriness might be an act to prevent a collapse of business confidence, unaware that he or she would be betrayed by a scent of vinegar. Again, this gives information context and a little bit of history a little bit more understanding the social life of information tells us that information needs people 
It is the social interaction of the people who produce and desire information that give the information shape and make it useful, make it knowledge.